Hello and welcome back. So you want to win fantasy and I can help you do that. If you haven't already, I have a strategy that consists of rules and tips to maximize value during your draft. You can check that out. It has its own playlist where everything is compiled. And this will be the fourth rule of that playlist today. Um, so today I wanted to look at hits and blocks together. Um, obviously the other videos that I've done focused on goaltending and the other four offensive categories. But what about these two? Uh, what if you could increase your numbers in these categories and only take up one or maybe two roster spots to do so. So just as a, an introduction, uh, previously I suggested that you draft two elite offensive power play quarterback defensemen to boost your offensive categories because the more offensive categories you win, the better chance you have of going on to the playoffs and winning championships. So that was uh, the first step of this process is making sure that you have two of those defensemen. But what about your other two defensemen? What should you do there? Should you focus more on offense or should you try to focus on hits and blocks? Um, and how do you use the draft to maximize your hits and blocks categories? That's what we're going we're gonna to go over today. So this is a dashboard uh, that I've come up with, and this is players who were in the top 10th percentile in both hits and blocks. And I went back a few years just to give you sort of a sense of, uh, you know, more players that you could add to that uh, as opposed to just last seasons, which were only a handful of players. So you can see on this list, um, this red right here, this is both uh, metrics combined and this is how this is sorted so Radko Gudis had the most hits and blocks combined he had 6.1 total but if you look at his hits he had 4.6 hits per game and if you look at the third place guy Jacob True but he had 2.5 so you're looking at two hits more per game than the third place guy on this list so if you're looking strictly for hits Gudis is incredible for that he had uh, an incredible hitting and blocking season last year uh, if you want sort of like a, a spread of both you're looking more towards guys like Truba who's had 2.5 and 2.1 respectively uh, Darnell Nurse 2.7 1.8 uh, but these are guys who are in the top 10th percentile in hits and in blocks and these are the guys that you're going to want to target in your draft as your D3 or D4 and we'll get into that in a second um, just to give you a sense of a couple more players, because that was not that many last year that hit that mark. Um, Adam Larson's another guy you could look at. Hawk and Pa. Truba's here again. Mario Ferraro had a good season uh, two years ago in San Jose with this metric. Um, David Savard, I'd look for a bounce back from him um, if he's going to be playing in the top four in Montreal. A couple of the other guys, Alexiak hits all the time. Uh, Braden McNabb, Labushkin. Borbietsky, um, you know, depending on uh, how effective you want to use these positions because he doesn't get a lot of offense in there. Tenorti doesn't really play. Irwin, not that much time on ice. But you can go back and uh, all of these these um, visualizations are available in the description below. So you can play with these yourself. And if you're going through your draft, you can kind of, you know, refer to these and see what the data is telling you in terms of who's going to get you hits and blocks. Um, but getting back to the presentation here um, there's a point to all of this where do you draft these hits and blocks defensemen so basically what you see here this is a very rudimentary spreadsheet that I made of just the players that were on the first two of those uh, slides that we just saw in the uh, the last graphic so everybody up to about here in uh, Braden McNabb that was this past season the guys who hit the top 10th percentile and then these are all guys who did it the season before and as you can tell, most of these guys are not drafted. So NR means not ranked. Um, so this is NHL.com average draft position, Yahoo average draft position. This is where they went in my own draft. And then this is where they ended up with the Yahoo rankings at the end of the season. So most of these guys that are going to get you these type of stats are not ranked and not drafted, which means you can pick them up off the wire if you need to, or if you're way at the back end of your draft and you're going with your absolute last pick and you still don't have a guy for hits and blocks, these are the guys you can target. You're not going to get one of these top guys, but you can probably get Alexiak or Hawk and Paw, Ferraro, Savard, Labushkin, any of these guys down towards the bottom you can probably get. But 
what you want to pay attention to here is the top two guys, Jacob Truba and Darnell Nurse. They were in the top 100 at the end of the season for Yahoo rankings, which means that they don't just get you hits and blocks, they get you other stats as well. And then the next thing that you want to notice is Radko Gudis. He doesn't get you pretty much any other categories. He gets you hits and blocks, but he does it at such a proficient rate that he's still ranked in the top 150. He's that good at hitting specifically, but also blocks, that he will get you that much value compared to where you draft him. Now, he was a little overdrafted in our league, but you know these guys go pretty quickly. So I think what happened in our league is he was the first guy off the board for hits specifically. And uh, it didn't end up hurting the guy who drafted him because he he didn't lose that much value compared to where he was drafted. But what you want to pay attention to is this guy is so good at hitting that he is that valuable overall, um, despite the fact that he doesn't put up a ton of offensive numbers. So when you look at these two things, what you notice is these are your targets. So this could be your strategy. Depending on where you draft your first two elite defensemen, as per the other YouTube video in the strategy series, you may be able to draft Nurse or Truba as your D3. So let's say you go out and in the 20 to 30 range, you pick up a defenseman like a Headman or a Fox or somebody like that. And then somewhere in the 40 to 80 range, maybe 40 to 60 range, you pick up uh, another defenseman, an Ekblad or somebody like that. So you've got your two offensive guys. If Somehow, uh, you know, if you look at the the previous slide, average draft position, uh, you're looking at, you know, uh, NHL.com, 113, 115 in that range for these two guys, uh, 99 on Yahoo for for Nurse and way further down for Truba. I doubt he'll still be at that 247 level this year after the season he put up. But if you're looking for your D3 and you can grab one of these guys, what that's going to do for you is it's going to give you exposure to a top 10th percentile hitter and shot blocker. Um, As you can see, the green here means that they're in the top 10th percentile. But you're also going to get a decent amount of shots per game. You had 2.85 for Nurse and 2.51 for Truba. And they're still going to get you almost a half a point per game average. So they're... They're not completely irrelevant offensively in some of your other categories. As you can see here, 28 assists, 26 assists, 11, 9 goals. So they're very similar players in the fact that they can score you around 10 goals, around 25 assists. They'll get you around a half a point per game average. Both of these guys are plus players if you have plus minus in your league. Um, And then shots on goal, you're still going to get a pretty decent amount of shots on goal. In fact, Nurse is in the top 10th percentile in shots per game. So these are the the golden gooses or the the unicorns that you want to look for as your D3. And if you can grab one of these guys as your D3, and then, you know, maybe a round or two later, you can go out and grab um, somebody like a Radko Gudis or a replacement level hitter specifically, then you've got a well-rounded defensive group that's going to get you all kinds of category coverage. You're going to have your two offensive guys that are going to get you a lot of your points, uh, goals, shots, as we mentioned in the other video. But then in this uh, analysis, you're going to get one of these guys who's going to get you hits and blocks and shots and points as well. So, uh, And then if you can do that and then add to that a Radko Gudis or somebody like that, you will be far better off. Now, this is a a hits dashboard that we're looking at here. Um, This is just the last two years. Just wanted to do something simple here. And what this is going to show you, you can target just hits, um, but why waste an entire roster spot for one category? You know, sometimes people go out and they try to grab Ryan Reeves or somebody like that, but you're wasting a right wing uh, position on a guy who's only going to get you hits and nothing else. So what you want to try to do is get a couple of offensive producers who have hits as a complementary piece to the defenseman that we just looked at. So what that looks like, so this is the dashboard here. This is just the overall hits leaders. So Gudis is number one. Shen is up there. He's a a big hitter. Um, Obviously wasn't top 10th percentile in blocks, so he wasn't on that previous list. Um, Ryan Reeves is up there. Tanner Janot had a breakout season last year as a rookie. Um, He had 24 goals. He was a half point per game guy and he had about almost four hits a game. Clutterbuck is always there. These are the guys who are just going to get you hits. But what about if you're looking for forwards that are going to score you points and get you hits? So this list is sorted by points per game. 
So you see some of the higher points per game guys here. Now the criteria for this is basically you had to play 25 games, you had to have a minimum of one hit per game, and a minimum of half a point per game average. So this is sorted by points per game. So these are the higher point total guys, and how often they hit is further out on this bar graph, and how uh, red or deep orange these bars are. As you can see, Brady Kachuk, he scores a decent amount of points. He had .84 points per game last year, 67 points in 79 games, but he was averaging 3.4 hits per game, which is really good. If you look at Evander Kane, he's in a great position in Edmonton. He had 39 points in 43 games. A lot of that was goal heavy. And if you remember back to one of our other videos that we did, um, you definitely want to corner the market on goal scoring wingers. So if you can get a goal scoring winger who also puts up 3.1 hits per game, that's kind of a unicorn as well. So he's a guy you definitely want to target this year if you're looking uh, for all of those category coverages. Um, but then you can just, you know, again, all of these are available in the description below. You can go through these and find some guys. Tom Wilson's obviously going to be a big hitter and he still puts up a decent amount of points per game. Um, Vincent Trocek, that kind of surprised me a little bit uh, that he hits that much, but uh, I guess that's good because he gets in on the four check and, uh, and he puts up some hits and still has a decent amount of points per game. You can look at uh, Felino. He's more of a big hitter than he is a point producer. Obviously, as you go down this list, you get less point production, but you get, you know, guys like Tanner Janot who puts up a, a crap load of hits. Um, and people forget about Brandon Tanev. He's a big hitter. Um, he just uh, he got injured last year and he was playing in Seattle. So kind of everybody forgot about him. But when he was on Pittsburgh, he was a, a really big hitter. So if we go back to the year before this and you go towards the, uh, the bottom here because he doesn't put up a ton of points, 4.3 hits per game. Uh, that was the last season that he was with Pittsburgh. So, you know, he could have a bounce back season this year if you're looking for a guy who's going to give you some offensive production, but a ton of hits at the same time. And going back to the overall strategy here, what you're trying to do is use some of these um, players. You know, you might want to pick a Brady Kachuk just for his point totals, but if you can add him for hits as well, then that's obviously going to pair well with your Nurse or Truba and your Gudis or Larson or Ristolainen or whoever else you're going to get for hits. So that means your, your third defenseman is going to be able to get you hits and blocks. Your fourth defenseman is going to double up on hits and maybe blocks as well if you can get two of those guys. And then you'll also have a forward or two here um, that you can try to continue to maximize your value on hits and point production so you don't waste a roster spot on a guy like Ryan Reeves who's just going to get you hits. So now, what's the, the final takeaway? Uh, I pretty much just summed it up there, but try to grab Truba or Nurse as your D3. And you're probably going to have to do this somewhere in the 60 to 90 range because um, it depends on your league size, of course. But when these guys start going, um, you know, by, by the time you, you grab one of these two guys, you need to have your other two elite defensemen first. Um, I don't know if I would advise using uh, Truba or Nurse as your D2 because they don't get enough power play looks. Um, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I know, uh, Edmonton has been having Bouchard quarterback their power play, and obviously in New York, Fox is quarterbacking that power play. And you need to make sure that your top two D are quarterbacking an elite power play. So if you can grab Truba or Nurse as your D3, and then you can try to grab another big hitter, specifically Gudis if you can, as your D4, you will be pretty well set for hits and blocks in your league. And then if you compare uh, a forward or two with these two guys, you will probably be able to maximize not just your offensive categories, but your hits and blocks as well. Now, this is, uh, um, you know, this all goes together. These four rules that I've put together, this is all part of a playlist. And you can go through and check out this playlist. Um, again, the, the first rule, just a quick summary, was to not pick a goalie in the first two rounds. The second rule was to have two elite defensemen that are quarterbacking power plays. Uh, the third rule was to try to corner the market on goal scoring wingers. And then this is the fourth rule, trying to maximize the hits and blocks for the least amount of positions. So you're only using two or maybe three positions on your roster to get these category coverages. So just want to thank you again for paying attention and keep an eye out. I'll be doing a couple more videos. Um, once I get uh, a couple different analyses going, 
there'll be top 10 lists, guys to look for this upcoming season, guys who potentially have changed teams, guys in good situations, guys who are looking for bounce back seasons. Uh, we're going to try to go over all of that in the coming days and weeks as we lead into the fantasy draft season. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.